Okay, everybody, welcome back to the Dana Buckler Show. My name is Dana, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, one Mr. Jason Waters. Jason, hello, sir. How we doing? Uh, doing well. Welcome back. It's, yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, we took another unexpected, <laughs> unscheduled uh, <laughs> sabbatical. Yeah, that was that was definitely on me. Uh, well, I think I, I, I bear some responsibility <laughs> in that as well. Before we get started with today's discussion, I just want to point out a couple things. You and I got a couple trips planned we over the next few months. So for our listeners in the Los Angeles area, Jason and I will be in LA October 15th through the 20th. So we're, uh, it's gonna be like a little, little movie themed excursion. Yeah. We're going to go to a few studios. I'm calling in a couple favors I'm, from I'm some of the up. people. I'm bringing my screenplay with me. I'm telling, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So <laughs> is it, you're, you're doing your screenplay is a prequel to uh which which is the movie with jason state statham where he plays chip chelios uh, oh, it was the prequel about his high school years it's about him getting his driver's license with the transporter the transporter yeah yep. so that i think that's yep. what your screenplay was on right it's yeah. him actually going through driver's ed that's it absolutely so <laughs> i'm excited i think it's gonna work that, you know what that, that is probably the next prequel coming out I, probably <laughs> probably so we're gonna do this whole movie theme thing we're gonna go to a couple studios probably check out a couple bars you know well, we're there because you know, LA. Yeah, I've been known to hit up a bar or two. So if you're if you're in the Los Angeles area and you want to possibly do a little meet and greet with us, just uh, drop us a line at the Dana Buckler Show at gmail dot com. And also uh, August twentieth uh, through the twenty fifth, I will be in New York City. Uh, this is going to be a trip where I'm just going. I'm going by myself. I haven't been in New York in a long time. I've never been. Gonna go. Yeah, I'm going to a couple shows. You know, I'm gonna do a couple <laughs> touristy things. Got to take it to a Yankee baseball game. But again, if you're a listener in the New York area and you're interested in getting together, maybe having a beer or a cup of coffee and shooting the shit for a little bit, I would be down for that. Just reach out to me. The Rainbow Room. The, well, that's in L.A. That's in. Is that in L.A.? Yeah. Thought, well, no. There's a Rainbow Room there yeah, too, okay, right? Yeah. yeah. There's. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Meet, meet me at the rainbow. Uh, meet, listen, me the meet me at the, listen, if you're interested, just meet me at the, uh, at the Empire State Building, the top of the Empire, of the State. Empire State Building. I'll be there Wednesday, the 22nd. <laughs> just let me know. By the title of this episode, you know, we're having a conversation about the movie Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. And this episode is dedicated to one of our dear listeners, Nora. Nora. Thank you, Nora. Nora has been a gracious supporter of this show. We, uh, we just wrapped up a 10 episode series on called, uh, 101 movies from the 1990s you need to watch. And Nora was, was, it was kind of becoming like a fun little gag to see, yeah. you know, if there was this particular movie she hoped that we would add to the list. And I don't think it happened until the ninth. It was the ninth th one. The ninth episode that yeah. we finally got it because then it became like, we're having these discussions. <laughs> putting like, it off until. Like, is this, do you think this is the movie? The only <laughs> hint she gave us was it was from 1993. Yeah. Like Leprechaun? Is it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Loaded Weapon One. You know, yeah. like, we're, like, we're trying to figure this out. <laughs> so we, we, and I think for a while there, I thought it was the, uh, Mrs. Dow. Fire. Right. I thought that was the movie, but yeah. she actually threw me a little curveball when giving me the hint. So, Nora, this this conversation about Jurassic Park is is dedicated to you. Thank you for for being you. Thank, Thank you so much. We appreciate everything. So, uh, Jurassic Park, lots to talk about when it comes to this movie. Yep. Um, but we need to sort of set some rules and parameters. Okay, we're having a discussion about a movie that came out thirty years ago. That's nuts. It's insane. I remember it like it was I last know. year that yeah. I saw this in the theater. But this is a time and a place where there are no sequels to Jurassic Park movies. All right. There's not any planned blockbusters. A movie came out. Studios hoped it would be successful. No, don't get me wrong. The pedigree behind this movie, a, a book based, uh, a, a book written by Michael Crichton, um, a movie directed by Steven Spielberg. You know, like we all had a feeling this was probably yeah. going to be a pretty good movie. Yeah. But let's go back to 1993 before this film comes out. And I just want to set the stage, like how much things have changed. It, the internet. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah. I mean, a few a few homes might have had American Online, right. America Online in 1993, but I'm telling you right now, like, go see a trailer for any movie today, and they show you stuff in the first act, the second act, the third act. Oh, yeah. uh, they, they, you'll catch the end. Like, everyone's like, have you seen the Fast and Furious movie? Well, yeah, I saw the four and a half minute trailer. <laughs> what else do I that's, need to see? That's it. <laughs> so, but when you saw the trailer for Jurassic Park, specifically like like the 30 second TV spots that would come yeah. out because this is how you saw trailers. You either saw the trailer in the theater or you saw a 30 second TV spot. Yeah. Like, do you know it was noticeably absent from the Jurassic <laughs> Park trailers? Dinosaur. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were noticeably absent. Like yeah. there was little hints like this is a movie 
I think it's about dinosaurs, but there was like you've said it before in conversation. Like Spielberg is a master of tell or show to sh- tell, don't show, uh, exactly imply, but don't yeah. show. Take me through your first viewing of seeing this in the theater. So I remember number one, the score. A, a, such a magnificent. I mean, you hear that coming on, and it just. I don't know why, but I mean, I even have it on some of my playlists. Just. <laughs> John Williams. I know. He's a master. So that's behind everything in this movie. But I remember as it was starting, I'm like, this is kind of funny. Like, I wasn't expecting this to be a comedy. I thought this was going to be an action movie. And you really don't get any action in it for almost 50 minutes. I was going to say, yeah, 45 minutes, almost, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you, you don't miss it. No. And the first time they show a dinosaur is probably what? 15, 20 minutes into the movie yeah. and it's a far away shot and you're like, okay, well, you know, it's, it's better than land before time, but mm, yeah. all right, that's, it's okay. And then it just, then the, the magic just, it, it, it will knock you off your feet the first time you see it. Let's just talk about the movie for a moment. All right. So, so <laughs> rewatching this the other day. All right. The thing that the trailer doesn't reveal. All right. Obviously there, we're, we'll get to the T-Rex sequence here in a little bit, but it doesn't reveal you know, velociraptors and, and, and right. say what you want. And I'm going to call bullshit on anybody that knew what a velociraptor <laughs> was before this movie, because I, at least in our age group, what? like yeah. as a 15 year old, I, I didn't know like the transformers that had like the dino bots, there wasn't a velociraptor right. in the crew. Yeah. There was a, you know, T-Rex and there was a stegosaurus and all that stuff. So I, I had no concept of what a velociraptor was. So this movie opens up and, and give credit to jaws. All right. For this opening sequence. Okay. Because as I'm watching it, I'm realizing Jaws opens up with Chrissy Watkins going in the water and we get a POV of the shark, but we never actually see the shark and we see her, her Mm -hmm. tragic, horrific death, but we it's, everything is implied. Okay. Now, again, this is because the mechanical shark didn't work that Spielberg had to come up with creative ways to let you know. So flash forward some 18 years later, he has honed that skill what? on a Only complete, 18 years. I know. Oh my God. He, he has completely honed that skill. Yeah. So when this movie opens up, it's he, remember everyone. If you're, by the way, if you've never seen Jurassic Park, like <laughs> there will be spoilers ahead. Yeah. So. There's going to be spoilers, but the, you just see the trees open. You're on an island. It says yep. uh, Isla Nublar off the coast of Costa Rica. And you just see like the trees rustling. And then this crate comes through and then there's all these people and then there's this game warden and he's just so like they've done this before you know yeah. loading team load the box loading team step away and you're like wonder what's in there <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just hear this shriek oh the the it's, sound effects in this it, are like fantastic you think this loading crate has locked it th- there's lights indicating that it's locked and then all of a sudden apparently a dinosaur comes running into the crate knocks it out and this poor bastard <laughs> you know he gets it oh yeah and you just hear the guy we learn his name is Muldoon, and he's just like shooter <laughs> yeah. you know they've got these tasers yeah you know, you know i want tasers on full charge and they're all like trying to shock this thing and he's just like shoot her shoot her, <laughs> shoot her. and then cut to you know a guy on a raft being yeah. pulled i'm like what that like that's a crazy opening sequence that doesn't you don't know what right caused that you yeah. don't like whoa whoa so this is <laughs> right off the bat you're like oh this is serious this is gonna be a little bit different this is not like you said the land before time <laughs> this is oh people are gonna die and like, that was spielberg's jaws opening yeah and much like Jaws, like you're not going to see another dinosaur, like for, a sequence like that for a long yeah. time. And what I like about this movie and what I respected about this film was a movie released today doesn't give the audience enough credit. That's if true. this movie comes out, if, if let's say Crichton RIP, but if he's still alive and, and he writes, writes this book in 2023 and they make this movie, here's where it's going to be different. This opening sequence is going to start with two guys talking. All right. Now, this is the Velociraptor. This is the most dangerous dinosaur we have here. We have to be very careful because this thing will hunt you. It's going to spell it all out for you. It's going to tell you, hey, this is, you know, this is what this is. And this is what this is. This movie is giving you, the audience, enough credits that, you know what? 
I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm confident that Spielberg is going to answer my questions. And yeah. I, I'm just along for the ride at this yeah. point. And a, a movie today is not going to do that. It's going to tell you exactly. This is the quantum realm. Well, and I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I what I love about it, too, is when he does explain it, like you you get a little video with Mr. Yeah. Mr. DNA. Mr. DNA. Mr. DNA. From your blood. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so smart about how it does it because it. It talks to you like you're a child and here's yeah. what, here's what you need to know. And that's it. And you, you buy into that completely. Absolutely. It's but, like, Oh, okay. So you don't, you still don't know. I mean, so well, here's what happened is you, you have, you have this guy being pulled on a, on a raft. All right. And they're, they're, they're clearly talking about what just happened. Yeah. This guy's a lawyer and he's like, listen, we need to, we need to figure out what's going on. Where's John Hammond? I'm supposed to talk to him. He Hammond can't be here, his grandkids yeah. and all this stuff. And then they immediately go into a mine and they, they they find Amber and you're like, what? <laughs> what? There's like a mosquito in there. Still yeah. a lesser movie is going to be like, all right, now this is the mosquito. Make sure you take very good care of this. We have to extract yeah, the blood. Exactly. It's just giving you little nuggets of this is important. We're going to explain why. Don't worry. Just enjoy the ride. Yeah. And it's just, and then we get to Costa Rica and we have Dotson show up and, <laughs> and you have Newman sitting out there Newman. at an outdoor, outdoor having lunch. And he's just like, we got Dotson here. Dotson, we got Dotson. Dotson. You shouldn't use my name. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his hat off. <laughs> and, but if you stuff that doesn't make sense, I think the first time you watch it, like, yeah. like he gives him $750,000 and he goes 750, 50,000 for every viable embry embryo after that, that's $1.7 million. Mm -hmm. And when they're having their conversation, the waiter drops off the check <laughs> and, and Wayne Knight just looks at Dotson and just goes, don't get cheap on me right now. He goes, <laughs> me now. that was Hammond's mistake. And you don't, I don't think you pick up on that the first time you see it. Yeah. Because you're always kind of wondering, like, you know, what, well, and him and Hammond get into it too yeah, yeah. about money problems. He does, and he does say to him, he goes, this is, oh, this, I mean, I think that the, one of my favorite lines is towards the end when Hammond's like, I know the mistake I made. He's like, I shouldn't have hired that IT guy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's actually what happened in this movie. <laughs> and it's interesting because, you know, I don't want to jump ahead too far, but. During that conversation where Hammond goes, I, I'm sorry about your financial troubles, but they're your financial yeah. problems. Yep. You know, and at the same time, Hammond's the, the, the type of guy who's like, spare no expense. Spare no expense. Spare except no, when it comes to except, IT. Except when it comes to IT. <laughs> Low bid. I'll take it. Right. So then we're introduced to a, we're in the Montana Badlands. Mm. There's a, there's a dinosaur bones being dug up and, I, I wrote this thing down because we're introduced to Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellie Sadler. You know, uh, he's a paleontologist. She's a bot paleobotanist and they're, yep. they're experts in their field. And we see this device that shoots something into the ground like and an x-ray machine. Yeah. X-ray machine. It gives you an image. And this is the first time you hear about a velociraptor. And, and, you know, you, you hear him say, look at, look, look at the pelvic bone. It's, it's reversed and no wonder these things turned into birds and everyone's kind of laughing. And then this little kid goes, doesn't look very scary, kind of like a giant turkey or something like that. And then Alan Grant turns around and gives him this whole, the best foreshadowing that you don't realize is foreshadowing where he talks about how the raptors attack you. Yep. Not from the front, but from the side. You just see that kid's face. Yeah. Try to show a little respect. Will you? <laughs> My question to you is whose kid is that? Yeah, it's true. Like, whose kid is that? Yeah. I'm watching this going, and he's like, I'm like, what, is, what a smart-ass little kid. Who brought the kid? Yeah. Somebody smacked that little kid. Like, clearly, Dr. Grant, and <laughs> like, you would think in the real world, Dr. Grant, if he, does, he doesn't like kids, apparently. He's, yeah. he's made it clear he doesn't like them. I think at some point, be like, I'm in charge here. Whose kid is this? Whose kid is this? Get him out of here. Get him out of here. He's going to fuck up. The, like, this is obviously, there's a lot of money being spent here. That's funny. John I'm Hammond. that. Helicopter lands. John Hammond shows up, tells him, "Hey, listen, I have a park in uh, in Costa Rica. You know, you got to come check it out. I'd love for you guys to come down there, spend the weekend, sign off on it." What off. kind of what kind of park is this? <laughs> and it still doesn't tell you. Yeah, no, right up your alley. Yeah, Hammond tells them, uh, "I'll compensate you by fully funding your dig for another three years." They're excited about that. Yep. Make sure we don't forget to talk about Jurassic Park three at some point in this conversation. Because when you talk about how William H. Macy buys Dr. Grant <laughs> to come down there. Yeah. Uh, cut to riding in a helicopter. This is where we're introduced to the lawyer, Gennaro. Well, Gennaro is, we now know Gennaro yeah. is the lawyer, Dr. Malcolm. Uh, I think one of his best roles. 
I'm looking at movies that Jeff Goldblum's been in before Jurassic Park, and I think he was probably most well known for The Fly, the Fly. Yeah. which is a can't ever watch a, again no? movie for me. No, is it? Oh, I love I mean, that movie. Have you ever seen The Fly Part Two with Eric Stoltz? I may have. I oh, think so. Oh, but I, I I love The Fly. I can't. Mm. I, I don't do body horror. I just can't. It's not me. <laughs> It's not me. So we're we're meeting our cast of characters at this point. They're yep. all going to the island. Nobody, even Gennaro the lawyer, doesn't know what's at the island. This is, and we'll talk about the music. When yeah. Hammond looks out the window, he goes, we're here. And then you get the big orchestra swell. I remember in the theater going, this is amazing. So on, um, on our honeymoon, we went to Kauai. Mm. And we're on the Nepali coast where that scene was filmed. And you you can be on the beach and just look at those mountains and you're just in absolute awe. It's incredible. And let's take a sidebar for a moment and just talk about CGI just for a second here. So the idea, like the Jurassic Park, the book I believe came out in 1989, became really successful by 1990. Uh, Michael Crichton had a non-negotiable fee of $1.5 million. Like that is you want the rights to this book, it's $1.5 million, probably a percentage of the box office yeah. as well. So they they get the screenplay. They give it to Spielberg. Spielberg's like, yep, I want this to be my next movie. And he needs his next movie to be something. <laughs> something Because he's, he's coming off of two movies, Always and Hook, okay, uh, which Always is fine. How do you feel about Hook? I'm not the biggest fan of that movie. Um, If, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the movie, but it all stems from the Lost Boys to yeah. me. That was just that was just cast wrong. If the cast of the Lost Boys was different, I think that movie would have had a different tone. Okay, yeah, uh, I think the Dustin Hoffman's probably the only like good part of that yeah. movie. I think he's he's having fun playing Captain Hook. Yeah, and so, Julia Roberts. So Spielberg going to take on a monumental task of doing two movies at the same time, which oh, is man. Schindler's List and Jurassic Park, two completely polar opposite movies, polar opposite movies. But for the, for the purpose of this conversation, in his mind, he's going to do stop motion. All right. So he's going to, he's going to go to Phil Tippett, who is like the master stop motion guy. This is the guy that does like the ATA walkers, AT, yeah. AT walkers and, and Empire Strikes Back and, you know, stop motion has come a long way since the days of, uh, you know, Jason and the Argonauts and, and, and things like that. You know, uh, the Harryhausen or, or whatever. Harry whoever, Hamlin. Yeah. yeah, the yeah Harry Hamlin and the Ray ha- Harryhausen yeah. special effects guy. Stop motion has come a long way. And there's a part of me that kind of wondered what a stop motion Jurassic Park would have looked like. I'm sure they would have. Hammond said they would have spared no expense. Spared no expense. So they're they're actually doing some test footage with stop motion, and you can go on YouTube and find it. It's oh, really? really interesting. Yeah. So Phil Tippett says uh, to Spielberg and Kathleen Ke- Kathleen Kennedy, who's producing the movie, say, "Listen, my buddy over at ILM, Dennis Murin, he, you know, they're doing some pretty amazing stuff with with dinosaurs. W- w- excuse me, with computer animation. Why don't you take a look at what he's got?" So they, they meet and he shows, he plays them like a 60 second demo of just uh, some dinosaurs running in a field. And Spielberg instantly said, that's it. That's what we're doing. We're doing it. Yeah. But to be fair to this movie, there is a lot of animatronic and practical dinosaurs in this film. Like they built a life size Tyrannosaurus Rex. Did they? Oh yeah. I did no, not know yeah. that. Oh yeah. No, it's like, it's, it's incredible. So huh. that is why. I think we'll get to the T-Rex scene, but the whole reason I came on this was they came onto this idea uh, or talking about the CGI was when that helicopter is flying through the mountains. Okay. That's all real. Yeah. Like that's not a CGI helicopter. I know. And if you haven't been there and seen that, you yeah. would think it was CGI and, and, and it looks like CGI. Being it, there. it does. <laughs> it does. It, it, and one of the most breathtaking shots is when they're lowering down yeah. With, yeah. Uh, against that waterfall and the music is playing and you're just like this. Like it's like an opera. I think people forget like the setup to this movie, the setup to just getting to the island. Yeah. Is the first 20 minutes of this movie is better than any sequel, Jurassic, any Jurassic Park sequel. Like it's, so there's something magical about the way Spielberg builds upon this, like the storytelling aspects of this yeah. film, because by the time they land, there's a great scene where, you know, Hammond's like, uh, you know, we're going to drop fast to air pockets and like that. And they're bouncing all over the place. And, and by the way, that helicopter, <laughs> that thing's easily a five, six million dollar helicopter. Oh, yeah, easily. For sure. Yeah. 
You're going to tell me John Hammond's not going to realize that the seatbelt's got two, like the seatbelts <laughs> don't match. Like that seems to me like he seems a little more detailed oriented than yeah. that. So they land, Jeeps, and they're off. Yep. And like you said, we're only like 15, 20 minutes into this film and you're like on board. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. You start pulling up and then hey, Hammond's like, stop, stop, stop. Jeeps, Jeeps. This is the big reveal. And Sam Neill's face when he finally sees it. And there's nothing there. But remember, remember, yeah. they're, they're, they're staring at nothing. Yeah. I mean, the way he just like, I mean, just claws his sunglasses off of his face and stands up in the, that utter look of awe. I think I had the same exact thing. I'm like, holy shit, that's fucking amazing. And it's very <laughs> clever. And Laura Dern looks and she's like, yeah. she's like looking at this, this plant. Yeah. And she's it, like, this species of plant has been extinct since the Cretaceous period. And he like turns her head and she does the exact same, yeah. like awe and bewilderment. And you see the dinosaur, but what's really clever is how Spielberg frames this shot. He's got the camera way down low, so it's almost looking up. You yeah. see, you see Laura Dern and Sam Neill. They're so small in the screen to give you this dinosaur scale. Yeah. And what's very clever about this is this is not a threatening dinosaur. No. Like we're just, but it's an enormous, it's an enormous one. Yeah. And looking at it now, 30 years later, yeah, you can tell it's CGI. You can, but at the time... At the time, you didn't. No, not even close. No. You would have thought you were right there with the dinosaur. And, and, the, and a lot of that has to do with, like, uh, you know, this was... We were we were watching this on 35 millimeter. Like, this, we weren't watching this in the theater on, you know, UHD, 4K, you know, you can see every little blemish and thing. Like, things just look, right. looked a little bit different. And, you know, I'm, I'm going through the movies from 1993 and there's just, there's nothing that even comes close on the, the special effects in this. So we, we always, we're always going to credit James Cameron. Um, he, he introduces the CGI as we know it in the abyss in 1989. Yep. He, he brings it to another level in Terminator 2 in 1991. Yep. So we got, we got the appetizers, but Spielberg is the, he's going to say, all right. Watch what I can do. Well, yeah, 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 I'm going to do it. And and you know what? The thing is, you buy it. Yeah, you do. You absolutely buy it. And Jeff Goldblum, he just has this great line. Where he's like, you son of a bitch, you crazy son of a bitch, you did it. You did it. You did it. And Gennaro's like, we're going to make a fortune with this place. You know, and it's just, all right, so now we're, now we're, now we're at the, uh, the main thing. This is where we're going to get the tour. Yep. This is where we're going to find out where to get this dinosaur from. From your blood. <laughs> And you get to meet B.D. Wong for the first time? Yeah. Yep. And so, but you said it perfectly. They spell this out so simply. Yeah. All right. Just, you know. Explain it to me like, like, explain it to me like I'm six years old. And, and they do, but and, not in an insulting way. No, not in an insulting way. Yeah. Because I remember watching this in the theater going, wow, maybe someday they're actually going to be able to do this. And 30 years later, oh. we're saying to ourselves, they probably can They probably this. have done They this. probably <laughs> have done this. Yeah, they're, they're my, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the crazy thing is up, I think it was Dolly, the, the first clone sheep was in like 96, 97. Yeah, yeah we hadn't even gotten that far, yeah. but they were working on it. Yeah. Can you imagine the shit that we don't know about? Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, not just this government, but other governments, they've got laboratories where they're... They're making people in, it, yeah. in buckets. Yeah, yeah there, there's there's stuff going on. Yeah. It's it's happening. You know what? I don't want to know any plausible deniability. Yeah. I don't want to know, <laughs> but I'm just going to assume that that type of thing is happening. And everything's cool. Yeah. Like, everything's cool. Like, all right, all right, cool. Yeah, I like dinosaurs. This is great. We're going we're gonna to see one hatch and... This is when we learn that they've they've bred velociraptors, yeah, and, and it's like, cool. Then we're gonna get to the the scene where they're lowering like a a bull or a cow or so, or like a water buffalo yeah. into the raptor pin, and 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 you still don't see them. You still don't see them. Yeah, and this is where Muldoon comes back out. Yeah. with his giant calf muscles, with his knee high socks. I noticed that the, today when I was watching, <laughs> I'm like, that man is in shape. <laughs> he is a badass, <laughs> yeah. and he he. Now, he is like the most reasonable guy on this island. Yes. Because he is like, I've hunted things that can hunt you before, but this is different. Like yeah. these fucking things. They learn. His first line is they should all be destroyed. <laughs> Again. And it will come to. Good foreshadowing <laughs> for him. It will come to love that. They should all be destroyed. And he's yeah. like, yeah, no, like they, they have, they're like really intelligent, like problem solving. They'll never attack the same part of the right. fence twice. They learn. Yeah. And. Great line here when uh, when they pull the uh, 
what's left of the carcass. Oh, God. And John Hammond's like, who's hungry? <laughs> we cut two of them having lunch where Gennaro is just like, oh, my God. We, we can charge $10,000 yeah, a day. Any, anything. Anything we want. And John Hammond's like, this park is not just for the super rich. Everyone has the uh, the uh, opportunity to enjoy this place. And, and Gennaro's like, yeah, we'll have a coupon day. <laughs> cut to Ian Malcolm, Dr. Malcolm. He is appalled by this place yeah he is like i can't believe what you've done it. like 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 this the amount of you know like the, the the like the amount of hypocrisy in this room is humiliating like it's your scientists were so busy trying to figure out if they could they didn't stop to think if they should right and like he is just like this is this is awful like, yeah and they're like i know it's fine they're all you know all the dinosaurs are female there's nothing we've accounted for everything he's like yeah. how do you know they're all female <laughs> well they, they require a certain chromosome and we just deny their that. skirts yeah <laughs> we just deny them that chromosome and he's like he's like yeah no i was like you know life will find a way life will find a way yeah, yeah. and uh and so hammond by the way he needs these people to sign off on the park yeah that's the whole reason they're there that's the reason they're there the guy who gets killed at the beginning his family is suing and the, all the investors are like all right before anything else happens yeah. we want these leading experts in the field out there saying it's good to go it's good to go and, and right now it's the only the only one that's on hammond's side is the blood-sucking lawyer <laughs> <laughs> he's what oh for one for one for four so then the target audience shows up hammond's grandkids lex and tim oh yeah now they're gonna go on the tour we're 40 <laughs> minutes into this movie you know like you said nothing with the exception of that opening sequence, nothing exciting has happened, but yeah. we're so into this movie. Well, and what I love too, you know, Spielberg and how he you know, can see 10, 15 years down the road. What does he put them in? In 1993, self-driving electric vehicles. Automated, like, self-driving Ford Explorers. 1993. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's touch with touchscreen interfaces. Yeah. Like none of that shit existed. I know. Spared no expense. Spare no expense. <laughs> so this is the part where we find out that little Timmy's a big fan of Alan Grant. He's like, I yep. read your book. I don't necessarily agree with your philosophies, but this other blah, 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 blah. It's time to go on the tour. Yeah. Okay. First one they go to is the uh, Dilophosaurus area. Yeah. These are the ones that can spit. Again, foreshadowing. Yep. Okay. Uh, by the way, we forgot to mention, there is a control room at Jurassic Park, mm. and it's manned by two separate people. Yes. Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> a year out, a year before Pulp Fiction. Yep. And Wayne Knight. Yep. Okay, Nedry. <laughs> okay. Now, we've, we've already forgotten there was this meeting that Nedry had with Dotson about he's going to steal the embryos. Yeah. And there's a storm coming. There's a hurricane coming. Like, all there is enough to move this plot forward, yeah. and there's 15 different agents of chaos working their way into this movie and i remember still thinking i'm like is, is newman gonna screw things up is like what's gonna happen is the hurricane gonna screw things up you know what is going you know it's all coming beautiful. together it's yeah. so perfectly woven together yeah. that you're still not even like <laughs> only watching it multiple times you're like oh yeah don't forget that hurricane's yeah. coming also because you don't know what to expect <laughs> when this happens so they go on the tour no dinosaur. They go to the ty <clears throat> Tyrannosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus paddock, and you're like, oh, I'm going to see Here a Tyrannosaurus. We go. We'll try to lure him out and put a goat up there. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think, what is it? Malcolm even says, like, are there going to be any dinosaurs yeah, on this yeah. dinosaur tour? You, you eventually plan on having dinosaurs on your <laughs> dinosaur tour, and you're him and going, I really hate that man. <laughs> it's, it's, fun. it's great. Then they, get, they find a, a Tyrannosaurus, I mean, excuse me, a Triceratops. Yes. Which is sick and but that's real that's a real practical yeah. effect right there so and i remember when he puts his head on its chest and you just see the air going in and out i remember just it's just breathtaking you're like what? Did, did did they actually have dinosaurs i mean i shit you not if you go to google and you start typing were the dinosaurs in it just says were the dinosaurs in jurassic park real yeah, like, I can reset that. And I, I'm I like, said, so is that a did real question? Did someone actually ask that? But you, watching it, you're like, shit, did they have dinosaurs? I remember a few years ago, there was a behind the scenes production still of Spielberg sitting in front of that, uh, in front of that Triceratops. Yeah. All right. And the thing looks dead. 
All right. And all these comments, it was on Instagram. All these young kids were like, what a sick bastard. Who would hunt something like that? And you've got like the, the reasonable people going, uh, that's from Jurassic Park. But there were so many like, you know, millennials that were just like, I can't believe this monster would hunt such a maj- majestic creature. People are so dumb. Fucking hate people. Fucking hate people. <laughs> hate people. What's wrong with you. So now we're getting our first glimpses of the storm. You start, yeah. to, you hear, you hear the thunder going off and you have, you have, um, Muldoon saying, Hey, we got to cut this tour short. Yeah. Well, we got to, we got to get this. And people. I got to be honest, who sends people out on a tour when the hurricane's coming? I mean, right. well, he needs them to sign off on this thing. Uh, wait a day. They can't go anywhere. The hurricane <laughs> could fuck up the island. We live in Florida. We know <laughs> we've been through it. Uh, so well well there he's like all right everybody back to the uh back to the the you know the electric vehicles time to come back uh dr sadler all right laura dern she's she wants to stay she's like nah i'm, I'm gonna good. stay i'm gonna stay with them he's she's she's fascinated she wants to help the yeah. sick dinosaur yeah you know and then so they get back in the thing so now how we have the cars broken down all right we got two ford explorers you have Gennaro the lawyer in the one vehicle with the two kids and then you have you got Dr. Malcolm and Dr. Grant in the one behind them. All right. They're, everything's going fine. The weather's taking a turn. Right around this time is when Nedry is going to execute his plan. Yes, master He's plan. Got an 18 minute window and your company catches up on years of research. <laughs> and he, you see him like you can see without, without him saying anything, you can see like, he's getting ready to push the button. He actually uses his other hand to guide <laughs> to put, once he clicks on that mouse. Cause he knows once that happens, there's no turning Done back. For. Yeah. He's got 18 minutes. They're saying that the dock, the, the, they've, he's got to catch a boat at the dock. The last shuttle for the boat leaves in 15 minutes. Yep. He's on the phone with a dock worker and it's like torrential rain out there. And he's like, no, we got to leave now. He's like, you got to give me 20 minutes. He's like, no promises. And you're like, shit pushes the button. And his face when he, I forget the story he comes up with to get out of the room, <laughs> but he's like sweating. He's, he's like, like ah, I, 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 listen, I finished debugging the, uh, the, the, the system. Uh, you know what? You know, this, this system might, might, might go online, offline for a few minutes. It's just, it's no big deal. I'm going to go uh, get something to sweet because I have something to drink because I have a lot of salty snacks. And, and they're just like, what the what fuck? Are you, with you? What is wrong with this guy? And they just like, literally like, it's so believable to them that they just turn around. No one goes, what was wrong with him? They're like, yeah. they just come, like everyone looks and they look back to go back to having their conversation. <laughs> he goes in, he steals the embryos, which they have this clever little device. It's a can of Barbasol shaving Barbasol. cream. He's taking them and then it's clever again. You see the species names. He's Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex, Velociraptor. He's grabbing them. He puts them in the can. He gets in his Jeep and he goes. Yep. Okay. But he can't see shit. No. Nope. It's great. I love it. He hits the sign for the dock, which is pointing one way. And when he picks the sign up, the arrow's pointing down. It's, he just spins it. <laughs> he takes off. He fucking just gets. Yeah. He just crashes the vehicle. So where are we now? Our, the system is going through like this debugging process. He's turned everything off. The gap, the electric powered uh, Ford Explorers, they have stopped in the T-Rex paddock, uh. which. <laughs> <laughs> they find night vision goggles. You zoom in, you see the goat. Yep. All right. You zoom back, the goat is gone. And you just hear Timmy go like, where's the goat? Where's the goat? Where's the goat? <laughs> Lands on the leg on the. We, we need to say that they have like glass ceiling, or yeah. glass roofs on here. So you can see all the way around 360 pan- uh, panoramic view. This is where the movie just completely changes. Yeah. All right. And I, I don't dare say, I don't know if you'll find a more tense scene certainly even in a spielberg movie than this 15 minute sequence during the the tyrannosaurus rex i think you could be right like and it's the way it just you see the goat what's left of the goat Mm -hmm. lands you start to see the perimeter fence fall apart like snap apart all the all the electric lines are snapping and it's just this reveal of the tyrannosaurus Uh. eating the goat God. And at that, oh my God. I, I remember being scared. I remember what? going, holy shit. <laughs> that is scary as fuck. It is out of control. Yeah. It is out of control. And that is, again, there is nothing in any of these Jurassic Park sequels that, certainly not the Jurassic World ones. I will say in the Lost World, the scene with the two T-Rexes, that whole sequence yeah. where like the, the caravan goes off of the ledge and, yeah. and you got our guy trying to, with his, 
you know, with his uh, wench trying to say, like that sequence admittedly is pretty damn good. Yeah. But what this movie does so well is we've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. So we have nothing to base this on. And as we're, as the, I guess you can call it an attack as the, the scene progresses and the T-Rex drops its face down there to look in the car and she's got a flashlight yeah. and it hits the T-Rex's eye and the pupil just goes from yep. big to small. And it's like, oh, no. Yeah. Like, and that, that was the animatronic T-Rex was that, it? They, that they brought down. Yeah. Cause they had, they had a full size animatronic. Oh, well, it, it looked, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's insane. The first time you see the T-Rex come across the, the barrier fence, that CGI, yeah. it, uh, look, watching this the other day, I'm like, that's some of the best CGI I've ever it's seen. Cause that up. thing looks real. Yeah. You could, you, if that was released right now, yeah. I mean, update to cell phones and different computers, but yeah. Um, yeah. No, the, C- it. the CG looks, looks, looks yeah. fantastic. And yeah. I say that as somebody who's pretty anti CG, it looks amazing. Yeah. This whole sequence is just ripe with tension. You, they've got the light. This is where, uh, you know, we learn that the T-Rex vision is based off of movement. Yeah. So if you hold still, it's not really going to be able to see you. And they've got that damn flashlight going, right? You know, you just hear Malcolm and they're like, turn the light off, turn the light off. They find some high, some road flares. Yeah. Get out. Great sequence. Oh man. Great yeah. sequence. And then old Malcolm tries to help. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, let's not forget up. about Gennaro. The Gennaro. first the, the first time we see Gennaro sees it, he like, jumps out of the car yeah. and he, he runs into a bathroom. By the way, there's a bathroom right there in the T-Rex paddock. <laughs> well, you know, we you gotta see go. the T-Rex <laughs> first time you just shit your pants. Yeah. Hey, Malcolm's like, well, you got to go. You got to go. <laughs> so he, he he's left the kids in there. Yeah. It's insane. And then Malcolm comes out with a, with a flare and the thing starts chasing Malcolm, knocks him over. And this is where we get our first like on screen death. The yeah. Gennaro, it just knocks the entire bamboo restroom <laughs> and he's just sitting there oh, on the toilet. Just, I just, I remember that was brutal. Yeah. Just brutal. And then again, this whole sequence just plays out for like 15, 20 minutes. It's incredible. It's yeah. a, it's a beautiful mix of, uh, CGI and practical effects yeah. and the action sequences. I mean, everyone in this gets involved in it it's not like yeah. you know three people are off doing this it's a you know, like you said 10 15 minutes with what five people and then they've got to then they're separated and they've got to get alan grant and the kids who doesn't like kids has to get back to the i don't even know what you call it home base yeah. resort base like the next time you're watching the sequence just keep in mind you know what's not happening during the sequence what there's no music playing i really yeah it's just it's just Spielberg's, you got you in the moment. There's no music huh. to to heighten the the tension. It's all all you hear is the sound of rain during pretty much that entire sequence. It's super interesting. It's, I have to rewatch that. It's because that I was really picking up on it this time. Yeah, because I started watching it on my on my TV, and then I switched over to my iPad when I was having some coffee. So I had my AirPods in, and I really heard the rain huh. this time. And I was just like, "There's no music playing this during the sequence." That's this, super smart. This is incredible. Yeah. So. There is obviously the big controversy about, wait a second, this T-Rex paddock is on the side of a cliff because we didn't, we didn't where did that cliff come from? But yeah, I mean, some of the practicality of it. Yeah. So the, the thing but. ends up knocking the Ford Explorer over, it falls in the trees. And again, this is, we don't have to get into, into it bit by bit, but that whole sequence, yeah. ultimately what happens is you have Malcolm severely injured. You have Gennaro dead. You have Alan Grant with the two kids now on foot inside of Jurassic Park with no safety fences, nothing. Yep. And this is, you know, the, again. And it's terrifying because you start to realize, like, the Velociraptors are, they're going to get out. Yeah. They're getting, they're getting out. Yeah. But and in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, shit. Your first time <laughs> watching. He doesn't turn the Raptor fences off the first time. He goes, why would he turn the rest of it off? Because he doesn't. Turn, oh, that's right. Yeah. He, he goes. Are there? Because uh, Muldoon even says, "Are there?" It was the reset. It was yeah. the reset that does yeah. it. Because if he resets it, that's exactly it. So Hammond, by this point, oh, 
we should talk about Nedry. But let's go back to Newman yes. for a moment because now, hello, Nedry. <laughs> no, so now this poor guy again, twenty minute window to get to the dog. Right, he's he has crashed his jeep. He is trying to get a wench to pull. These jeeps yeah. have wenches on him. He's trying to wench her out. Then we see this cute, adorable little dinosaur just pop up, make these fun little. It's little noises, uh, you know. I like, love oh. that scene where he's like, "You want to stick? You want to stick, stupid? You want to stick, stupid?" He goes, oh, you, "You're not so bad, you know, like your big brothers. There, you're so bad." And then, uh. and then the thing just flares up again. This is that's an animatronic dinosaur right there, and it spits. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, he falls. Yep, I, he he falls. The can of Barbasol comes out, gets buried under the mud. You're thinking, "Oh, well, there's a red herring for." Yep. For a later, that's how that's how that's we're gonna get our sequel. Episode two, yeah. That's how we're gonna get our sequel. So he meets an awful death inside the jeep, <laughs> a, a very um, well deserved death. Yes, yes, because he's caused all of this. Yeah. Like he, he he has caused all this. So so back at the headquarters, back at the uh, the Enterprise, <laughs> if you will, you've got Samuel L. Jackson, Hammond, and Muldoon, and they're like. I can't get Jurassic Park back on without Nedry. Like you see Samuel L. Jackson, he's got that cigarette in his mouth that is completely yeah. burned down to yeah. the, and you just see him. It's just, it's just a close up of his mouth. He's like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't turn this on. And, so, and, <laughs> and you just constantly hear that. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. You didn't say the magic word. Uh, uh, uh. You know, fucking Samuel L. Jackson's like, please. <laughs> <laughs> if this was an R rated movie, it would have been like, please, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you have Hammond, who's just like, he looks at Muldoon, and he's like, I wonder if you would take a Jeep and go out and get my grandchildren back. Doesn't say get, find out what happened to Gennaro oh, or yeah. Malcolm or Dr. Sadler or Dr. Grant. Just, just go get, get, my, get my kids. I feel like there's a line that was left out. It's like, don't worry about anyone else. Just <laughs> just get Lex and Tim. Yeah. I'd have a hard time explaining this to my daughter. So so they go out. They find, uh, you have Muldoon and, and Dr. Sadler. They find uh, Malcolm. Yep. You know, he's still alive. They put him in the back of the Jeep. During the build up to the T-Rex scene, you see a cup of water and you see a vibration wow. happen. You can hear a footstep in the background. You see a vibration. So Malcolm's sitting in the back of this Jeep. Well, they're, they're off looking for survivors and you see a puddle, a puddle on the ground and you start to see it vibrate. And Malcolm's talking to himself. You know what that is? That's a seismic vibration. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an impact that's tremor. An impact. Oh my God. And, and it's like literally explaining to us what happened earlier on. Again, brilliant filmmaking. <laughs> my God. Yeah. And then he's like, oh shit, something's coming. They come back to the Jeep. Must, must go. Go, 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 go. One point, Sadler says something like, do you think we should risk moving him? He's like, yes, yes, please risk it. <laughs> so, so they're in the Jeep and all of a sudden here comes the T-Rex again. And, and again, earlier in the movie, when you see the first dinosaur, Grant says to Mel, uh, to Hammond, how fast are these? How fast and, are they? And he goes, well, we've clocked the T-Rex at 32. And you're, they're so like, you have a T-Rex, you have a T-Rex. But again, foreshadowing, we know that these T-Rexes can go at least 30 <laughs> miles an hour. So when this Jeep takes off, yeah. it's right behind them. Malcolm hits the, sh the stick shift and the thing's <laughs> not in gear. It's, it's, a, it's so good. Oh, yeah. And that scene where it's a shot, it's a shot of the, the side mirror. Oh, and objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, and this yeah. T Rex comes right in. You're like, that is, I mean, God. But it's, the other great thing too is, you know, Hammond tells him directly. He's like, take one of the gas vehicles. Yeah, I wonder I mean, if you take one of the gas powered jeeps yeah. and go get my grandkids. <laughs> so, because an electric vehicle, you you ain't going. No, you ain't beating that guy. So they they escape. All right, so they got they get back there. So you basically have Doctor Grant. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're just hiding in a tree. Yeah. You know, it's a lovely scene where you see these safe dinosaurs, all these necks pop up and then yeah. one sneezes on the, the kid. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Yeah. Cut to back to the enterprise and they're trying to figure out, you know, how do we, we're going to have to shut this whole thing down. Yeah. And that's when like they, Nedry's not coming back. Yeah. Like we don't know where he is. Yeah. He's gone. And he says, uh, Samuel L. Jackson says to him, like, I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Nedry. And so the decision is made to cut the power to the entire park. And that's when you get the first hold on to your butts. <laughs> hold on to your butts. <laughs> turns the power off, turns it back on. Nothing. Nothing. And then all of a sudden you see a little cursor flashing on the computer and they start to go to work on that. But. This might be a design flaw, but that's not how you're going to turn the perimeter fences back on. That's going to require someone to go to a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so nobody really 
thought this thing out. Yes. And it's, again, this is amazing filmmaking. Because at this point, you have Dr. Grant, Lex, and Tim. They're at one of these perimeter fences. They can't get through it. They have to climb over it. You have you have Samuel L. Jackson, Laura Dern going to the bunker. Yep. You have Muldoon with a shot. Now he's got a shotgun. Like they're all working together, but they're in different parts of the island. Yeah. You have this amazing scene of them like climbing over this perimeter fence just as Dr. Sadler is like And you you're watching her yeah, you turn yeah. the things on and you're just going Oh God, here it comes. Yeah. And the alarm starts going off on the fence. And it's like, Oh my God. I mean, you have Hammond trying to ex- explain to Dr. Sadler what to do. And you have Malcolm going, God, get, you guys are, they're arguing over yeah. whose directions and they get to the, they, they turn the power on. Yeah. You know, I thought it was really cool. Like three pumps and then <laughs> you know, push, you know, prime the electric engine. Yeah. It's like, geez. <laughs> And then it was like, how you see, you like, you see each fence, you got to turn each one on individually. And they're yeah. all like Jurassic Park. I mean, uh, like Tyrannosaurus Rex, blah, blah, blah. And you see down where they are. Yeah. And it's just so nuts. And you think, well, this is a Spielberg movie. Of course, the kid's going to make it. Nope. <clears throat> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two minutes later, he's, 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 he's dead he's, on the ground. He's electrocuted. And yeah. they have to, he has to do CPR to bring him back. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So they, they make it back to the perimeter yeah okay this is where we get our first introductions to the raptors Ooh. all right scary as all get out you have you have muldoon out there because you think at this point you think well i'm sure that you know they're back in they're back in the building yeah pretty, and i think even sadler at one point says are, they, are we okay it's like well yeah unless they Learn how, how to open, open doors, doors. <laughs> so <laughs> got to the raptor got to open, open door. door so <laughs> She turns the perimeter fences back on. She's still in the bunker. Old Samuel Jackson's hand comes out uh-huh. on, and he's like, we did it. We did it. turn around. The hand just flops <laughs> off. And here's like, like, oh God. Yeah. But the bet, one of the best parts of this movie is like Muldoon's like outside the bunker and he sees a raptor. Mm-hmm. He sees one. And it, the way he just like pulls the shoulder stock of this shotgun, he's like trying to not make any noises and he raises up and then. Clever girl. To his left, one comes out, and he just says, and he even he's like offering respect. Like, yeah, clever girl. Which is exactly what Sam Neill says in the beginning yeah. when he's explaining, yeah. not from this. the front, but from the sides. Yep. And Muldoon doesn't know that. Yeah, he doesn't know that, and he gets a brutal death. Oh. Again, it's described at the beginning of the movie like they're going to cut your. The, <clears throat> you are alive <laughs> when yeah. they begin to eat you. Yeah, like, it, it's the jugular like a like a lion. You have Lex and Tim. They're back. They've got this buffet of desserts and food and all this stuff and they're just eating food and then again great scene where she's got like a spoon of lime jello and she starts shaking yeah and like this is an incredible scene like this whole scene with the kids in the kitchen with the two raptors yeah again that first time you see one of those raptors jump like from and and then think you realize that it's a reflection like uh, like it's it's so well done like And bravo to Universal and to Spielberg and to whoever cut these trailers by by not having this. That was, I mean, that's your dessert. Yeah, like (laughs) it's so it's such a great action scene. And you're saying to yourself, like, nothing's going to top this T Rex scene. Wrong. Yeah, like these raptors are incredible. Like that whole scene. Like unless they learn how to open doors and and you see the raptor like breathe on the door. Oh God, it's incredible. Yeah cut to you know they're all together they're trying to escape it's like it's kind of like aliens like they're coming through the (laughs) ceiling the whole thing they get to like at the at the uh, at the headquarters like there's a full scale like uh uh, dinosaur bones tyrannosaurus rex they're like dry they drop on this thing all over like it breaks apart the raptors are over there and cut to here comes a (laughs) t-rex kills the raptors (laughs) And the great line where Hammond pulls up on a gas-powered Jeep, Dr. Malcolm's in the Jeep, Grant says, you know, after further, after giving it some consideration, <laughs> I've decided not to endorse your park. <laughs> like, and, yeah, me neither. Yeah, me either. And then nothing more needs to be said. We're on the helicopter. The, the kids are sleeping. You know, they're, the, Grant's got his arms around the two kids, and they're sleeping. Ellie's just looking at that like, this is great. Movie's over. Yeah. Incredible film. And I'm... I, I, I remember reading the book, um, and I think they covered it somewhat in it's either the second one or the fourth one, the pterodactyls. Yeah. Um, in the book, that's really the only thing that I think 
was left out that should have been put in there. But yeah, fantastic. Movie. So I you know, speaking of the book, because I'm always curious, like obviously everyone knows that Jaws is my all time <clears> favorite <throat> movie. Yeah. I have actually read the book Jaws three or four times, like from start to finish, like I've read the book and there are some notable differences <laughs> in the book. Richard versus, versus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the character of Hooper in Jaws, not to go on a Jaws tangent yeah. is like a, like a Hampton Island, like social elite, good looking guy yeah. in, in the book and who Ellen has an affair with. Brody's wife. Yeah. He has an affair with and Brody confronts him about it. Yeah. There's also this great subplot where the mayor, he's keeping the beaches open is because He's gotten into like he's bought all this beachfront property from the from mob loans, <laughs> and if this if I if Amity is wrecked and you know he's going to be into the mob for a ton of money like there's a whole mob subplot, <laughs> and and I don't want to get too graphic here, but th- one of the ways like when it's Brody Hooper and Quint on the boat like. The movie will have you believe that they just went out and never came back to shore. Well, in the book, they go out and come back and go out and come oh, back really? a couple times. Huh. And one of the ways that uh, Quint, I don't even know if I want to say this, one of the ways he attracts the shark is he has a baby dolphin. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that Hooper, by the way, is a marine biologist in the book, loses his mind over this. He goes, you can't do this. Oh. It's like, it's the only way to attract the shark. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God. And I don't want to get into more details. Uh. But for everyone listening, none of that's real. It didn't really happen. This is a book. But I can't I re- believe they killed that baby shark. Uh, uh, I, was just like, yeah, I was like, oh, my God. I remember the first time I read that? I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, All right. But when it comes to Jurassic Park. I, I did come across this article that has some notable differences between the book and the movie. And, okay, so the first one says, when it comes to the raptor pack, at the end of the film, the characters find themselves having to escape the pack of velociraptors on the island. But the well-timed appearance of the T-Rex sees the dinosaurs attacking each other, allowing the characters enough time to escape. In the book, the raptors are a much larger plot point as it's discovered that they have been breeding and attempting to migrate away from the island. They also have a different fate. Instead of being attacked by the T-Rex, Grant kills them by feeding them egg by feeding them eggs that he has injected with poison. Interesting. Okay. Speaking of Grant, Dr. Grant is shown to dislike kids at first in the film, but eventually bonds with them over traumatic experiences they share together. However, the book version, Grant is much different, acting as an almost father figure to the kids from the very beginning. Additionally, there is an underlying romance plot between Dr. Grant and Dr. Sadler in the film, but in the book, there is no chemistry between them whatsoever, and in fact, neither of the, char- in, in fact, neither of the characters are expanded upon greatly in the novel. Mm-hmm. Okay, another one. Henry Wu. Okay, Dr. Henry Wu is a relatively small role in the original Jurassic Park film, which is a surprise to most fans as he features far more in the Jurassic World movies. However, Wu is a major character in the book and actually the person who came up with the idea of filling the gaps in the dinosaur's genetic code by supplementing the DEA, the DNA of amphibians. Given how important Wu's character was in the book, it makes a lot more sense as to why he reappeared so much so in the film's sequels. Interesting. Yeah. That's super interesting. Okay. Uh, John Hammond. All right. The character of John Hammond, the creative Jurassic Park, was made a lot more likable in the film, where at the end he admits the error of his ways and agrees that the park was a failure. However, in the book, Hammond is a bit of a nasty character driven by greed and obsessed with this park being a success to the very end. Another big difference when it comes to Hammond is that he actually dies in the book. Hammond believes he is being chased by a T-Rex, but it's actually a recording of a roar and falls down a hill while running away, unfortunately breaking his ankle and leaving him incapacitated. He is eventually killed and attacked by a pack of, I can't pronounce this, But it's the little dinosaurs from the Lost World. Gallimimas? So, so, yeah, I can't even pronounce it. It starts with a P. Pro, blah, blah. I can't pronounce it. But it's the little dinosaurs. (laughs) Little tiny baby ones. Like from from the the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. So he. Scavengers. Yeah. The book was far more violent. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Jurassic Park was rated PG-13, and it had its fair share of scary scenes, moderate violence, profanity, and a couple of low-key sexual references or imagery. While there are a number of horrifying scenes, especially where characters are killed or attacked, the film was actually rather soft in comparison to the book. The Jurassic Park novel is extremely violent, with very graphic descriptions of what happens and what takes place. Some examples of the gruesome violence in the book include Muldoon slicing the clever girl raptor in half with a rocket launcher. <laughs> John Hammond beaten, being eaten alive by a group of the little dinosaurs and Dennis Nedry uh, carrying his own intestines after being attacked. Uh, I do remember that, yeah. <laughs> Ian Malcolm's T-Rex attack, okay? In both the film and the book, Dr. Ian Malcolm is injured by the T-Rex, but the film makes this an honorable moment when Malcolm is trying to lure it away from the children, whereas the book has him running away in panic when he is attacked. Despite his injuries, Malcolm continues to help his companions and is rescued along with the others at the end of the film. In the book, after his attack, Malcolm frequently rants under the effects of morphine and eventually succumbs to his wounds and dies. Interestingly, he makes a comeback in the sequel novel, Jurassic, uh, The Lost World, claiming that he was prematurely announced deceased. <laughs> <laughs> this is likely because by the time the book was finished, the first film was already released and Crichton may have wanted to keep the books in line with the film series where Malcolm had survived. Yeah. All right. Now, last one. The fate of Jurassic Park. At the end of the novel, Jurassic Park is destroyed when the Costa Rican Air Force is flown in to bomb the island in an attempt to rid the world of dangerous dinosaurs. However, in the last few page pages, it's revealed that a few young raptors managed to survive as stowaways on the supply ship. Of course, when it comes to the film adaptation, it was likely hoping to cash in on at least one sequel from the get-go, as Michael Crichton was already penning the novel to the, was already penning the sequel. Having the majority of the dinosaurs in the original theme park destroyed, destroyed wouldn't have had the same impact for the film sequel, so it's understandable that this ending was changed and the island was essentially left alone. Fun fact about Steven Spielberg. You ready? Yep. Here's a fun fact, okay? Three times in his career. I know where you're going with this. He directed what would become the highest grossing film of all time. Yeah. All right. It happened in 1975 with Jaws. First movie to make $100 million. Although, I always like to point out this one little tease. Everyone talks about how in 1975, Jaws was the first film to make $100 million. There was another movie in 1975 that made more than $100 million. And that was One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh. Uh -huh. Now. Which won the big five. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jaws made 400 million. <laughs> Cuckoo's Nest made 170, which is damn respectable. 470 is good for a Ant-Man 3 yeah. nowadays. They're going to get there. They're just going to, they're going to get there. 1982. E.T. E.T. Okay. Goes on to become the highest grossing film of all time. And in 1993, Jurassic Park. Yep. All right. Jurassic Park. Not adjusted. Well. No, it made $1.46 billion. I yeah. believe it was the first movie to make a billion dollars. It was, and it was on three different re-releases. Mm -hmm. So franchise-wise, you know where that number's at? Let me take a guess here real quick. Franchise-wise, one, two, three, four. I'm going to say we're at close to $5 billion. Right above $6 billion right now. Wow. $6 billion. Okay. And the movies get worse and worse. All right, let's just let's just briefly go through. Uh, all right, three years later, nineteen ninety seven, mm -hmm. Spielberg's going to do the Lost World, a movie I uh, we all saw yeah. opening weekend in the theater. And I don't know how that didn't make my list for worst sequels. Like that's I really hated that movie. I I I remember I was tricked. <laughs> um, in that, and I was like in that period of my life where I would have rose colored glasses for certain filmmakers. They couldn't make a bad movie. Yeah. Even if I wasn't like enjoying the film, it's because I wasn't understanding what their <laughs> vision was. So in, in 1997, it was impossible for Steven Spielberg to make a bad movie. I'm just, yeah, I just, you know, I'm just, I'm not getting it. But I'm, so I remember leaving the Lost World going, oh, that, that was great. <laughs> then I've rewatched it a couple times and I will contend. That that T Rex scene, the dueling T Rexes, that whole sequence, well, not as suspenseful as the original T Rex. I think that is a really that's yeah. master class Steven Spielberg. Like that's I, really I'll good. give you that. That is really good. Just the rest of the plot. <laughs> the whole T 
T-Rex loose in San Diego. Uh, like really that crazy. is that that's where the movie completely lost me even on a first time viewing. Yeah. I'm like this is aw- like what are we doing? Yeah. Jurassic Park 3 I think comes out in 2000, 2001. It comes out July 2001. 2001. So I did see that in the theater and I remember mm-hmm. that was direct I believe that was directed by Joe Johnston who by that point had done Jumanji. I think that was his, the original Jumanji. I think that was kind of his claim to fame, but he was in that Spielberg, Kathy Kennedy, Amblin group. Like he had, yeah. I think he had done something with the the first two films, production design or something, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Jurassic Park 3. See, I... You liked it more than The Lost World. I could probably watch The Lost World more than I could watch really? Jurassic Park 3. I yeah. mean, I think we talked about, like, Taylor Leone. Eh. William H. Macy. Macy. Eh. You know, the acting's not great, but the plot of it, I actually really enjoyed. And I thought it was a lot I thought it was a lot better than The Lost World. Well, I, again, I just, the, the, the sequence, like, like these mercenaries that <laughs> William H. Macy's hired, the one nerdy guy, like, how is this guy a mercenary? <laughs> Like the other guy, Coop or whatever his name was, he looked he yeah. looked the part, but this one guy did not. But it's so great. Like they got these fifty caliber, fifty cal <laughs> rifles, and they're like, "Just stay here with the plane. We're gonna check it out." Yeah. And then five minutes later, you see them running back. Oh, no. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. That whole plane crash sequence is, uh, I think, is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I was not the it, the movie just didn't work for me. And then. You know, so we're going to, it's 2001, so 14 years later, 14 years later. we're going to get Colin Trevorrow's uh, uh, The Lost World, or excuse Jurassic me, Jurassic World, World, a movie that I have never actually watched from start to finish. Really? I've watched. It's, that That was what gave me a little bit of hope for the, you know, because you knew once they rebooted that, that there's going to be more. And it's not terrible. I mean, it's. From what it's I understand, such a rip off of the first one, but from, from what I understand, like compared to the two sequels, like oh, that's yeah. it's the superior of those three Jurassic oh, yeah. World movies for sure. Because I started watching Fallen Kingdom, like every one of these movies, I start to watch, and I'm like, oh, what are we what doing? Are we doing here, like yeah. So you get the the love interest between Dallas Bryce Howard and I keep wanting to say Chris Pine, uh, b- b- Andy Dwyer. <laughs> Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. <laughs> um, these these training raptors. Like, what are we doing? Like, I remember watching. Like, I'm like, what yeah. are we doing? Yeah. And it's always it's always like they have to genetically create a super dinosaur, you know. And this one's like a hybrid of a Velociraptor and a T Rex or something like the, that. I, I forget. They call it like Indominus. Indominus Rex. Indominus Rex. Like, it's what? like sponsored by Verizon. Like, what are we doing? Like, uh, you know what? Uh, look for the people out there listening. You like the Jurassic World movies? That's awesome. Yeah. If you're finding you're finding joy in these movies that I'm not, like, all more power to That's you, it. man. Like, there's I like Rad from 1986. <laughs> you know, I like Iron Eagle. Like, those are arguably not good movies. So. Yeah. Like what you like, love what you love. I'm not judging that. Just nope. so this, I have like a new saying. It's not that I hate it. It's just not for me. <laughs> That's my new saying when it comes to him. It's not, not that I hate it. It's just not for me. It's just not for me. I like that. But overall, like, look, I wish we lived in a world where Jurassic Park was just the one film. Yeah. You know, I, I really do wish we lived in that world because there's something about a magical movie that has a really good satisfying beginning middle and ending and then yeah. like that's it it just exists why you need to remake shit i just i mean we we know why well yeah uh, i mean although did i tell you my idea for the reboot of um weekend at bernie's with will ferrell no that's well, that's one of the screenplays i'm gonna sell hey listen just a friendly <laughs> reminder we're gonna be in los angeles in october <laughs> all right well if you want to get together if any if any of our agents out there want to want to listen to what we're Jason and I, we're going for pitch meetings. That's why, that's why we're going to Los Angeles. We're going for pitch meetings. Now we haven't got any set up yet, but we're going to do our best. We're going to be knocking on some doors. <laughs> that should be a good time. All right. Well, Jason, this was a good time. I enjoyed uh, yeah, discussing Jurassic absolutely. Park. Nor this episode was for you. Uh, thank you for being an amazing supporter of this show. And, uh, uh it was a pleasure of, for Jason and I to I discuss one of our favorite movies. Absolutely. Like, this was a no brainer. Like, yeah, we got this. We got this. So again, I'm going to be in the, I'm going to be in New York city uh, in August. I would love to meet up with any, any listeners of the show here. Uh, Jason and I will be in Los Angeles in October. If you're listening to this, obviously 
a year from now, we had a lovely time. <laughs> Probably drank more than we needed to. And that one time you did that thing. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. So, so Jason, it's always a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, if you want to follow this podcast on social media, we have a Facebook private group that there is, there is a link in this episode show notes. Join the discussion. Also on Twitter at Dana Buckler Show. I'm on Instagram at the Dana Buckler. And you can email the show, the Dana Buckler Show at gmail.com with questions, comments, and uh, all that good stuff. Don't forget to check out our Patreon where we just finished up our 101 movies from the 1990s you need to watch. And we are getting ready to start 101 movies from the 2000s, <laughs> I'm which so excited for that. I. <laughs> Have been having a blast, yeah. like rewatching movies. There's so many movies I saw in the theater in that decade that I only saw one time. Yeah, that I'm like rewatching, like rewatching Capote the other day. Spoiler alert: going to make the list. <laughs> Amazing movie. Yeah, it Amazing is. Amazing film. Good night and good luck. Great movie. Street. Like not to not to show my hands, but you know, there's we each oh, have 50 movies we're my, adding to this list. Yeah, my my first one's gonna be Stranger Than Fiction. I'm gonna make you watch that for the first time. Stranger Than Fiction. Well, shit, I guess I'll have to watch that <laughs> later on tonight. So, all right, everybody, it's been a pleasure, and we will talk soon. Thank you. <laughs>